What's everybody doing? My name's Mike, and we got Miss Maggie with us today. Good girl, Maggie. Good heel. Good job. So, <clears throat> Maggie's hanging out at heel. She's doing a good job. She's she's uh, hanging by my left side. So, this is how you properly walk a dog. Uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the differences, you know, between a harness and a collar, and why we use a collar uh, with dogs instead of a harness. So, Miss Maggie came to me uh, with a harness on her, okay? And uh, one of the complaints the owner had was the dog is constantly uh, pulling and uh, the dog would also slip the harness. So the dog learned how to do that uh, behavior and had success with it. The dog was able to kind of teach the owner how to not have tension on the leash so that she did not slip the harness. So the dog was actually controlling the movements of the, uh, the humans. And that's not what we want. We want to control the movements of the dog as the human. So if the dog has a harness on, you're going to have a hard time walking the dog. Harnesses were invented for dogs uh, to be able to pull. And this is actually a farm dog so when you give a farm dog an opportunity to uh, to pull and as you see the leash you see how the leash is loose on her uh, so she's at heel and she's walking with a loose loose leash if you have a harness on the dog it actually gives them the ability to pull and this is a farm dog so she in her genetics she's meant to pull things uh, when you put a harness on their body they have a lower center of gravity and they have the ability to to pull you, it gives them more strength. The harness was created for dogs to pull heavy things with it, okay? Now the reason we use a collar, and when we use the collar, it's always loose until they do something we don't want, and then uh, we create tension for one second, and then it goes away. So the reason we use a collar is very simple. When this dog goes to look at something that I don't want her to look at, I cannot control her with the harness. If I have a collar on the neck, now I can gain some kind of control of the head. So if the dog looks in this direction and I give a yank, then the dog's going to look back. I can actually control, have some kind of control over the dog's head with, uh, the, with a collar on. So the collar is going to help you control the dog's head. Wherever the dog's head looks, that's the direction the body will follow. That is guaranteed when the dog looks at something, the body will follow if the dog looks long enough. So that's why we always make sure we have a collar. Just like right there, a, a bird just took off and she perked up a little bit, so I gave her a little correction. Hey, hey, I got the leash wrapped around my body so I can just kind of walk her and hold the camera. But when I need to, I just reach down. I just reach down and give her a little correction when I need her to, to slow down, right? So that's why we're using a collar also to be able to correct the dog. You cannot, uh, the way a mothers correct the pups is they actually bite them on the back of the neck, okay? I'm using a prong collar, which will replicate that for her, okay? So <clears throat> I'm doing something to the dog that she biologically is going to respond to genetically in her body. A harness will not do that. So there's two things going on with the collar. I can gain control of the head, or a couple, more than two. I can gain control of the head, I can give an effective correction, and uh, <clears throat> it's just gonna give you more overall control of the dog when a harness is gonna give the dog the ability to pull, which is mostly the number one complaint we get from people when they're out on walks from their dogs before they've gone through training. So uh, a harness is not going to help. You must use something where you can gain control of the dog's head. Again, you can't just throw any collar on the dog. You have to train the dog how to respond to leash pressure and uh, train them so they understand and have a clear line of communication with you about what they're supposed to do. And it doesn't happen in one session. It doesn't happen uh, overnight. It takes months and months and weeks and weeks and weeks, months and months, years and years of training to keep your dog that way. Uh, we do it in about three weeks for dogs and then we pass it on to the owner and their job is to 
keep doing those same things and eventually it's, it just becomes muscle memory for the dog and uh, it becomes really easy for the dog to do things like walk just like this because they're asked to do it every day all the time and anytime she goes to the bathroom this is what we're doing so I'm taking her to the bathroom so I'm always walking her outside she comes outside three four times a day she sees cars people all that kind of stuff and she's required to walk by my side and uh, heal to me and not go use the bathroom until I give her the command uh, to do that so uh, if you're walking your dog on a harness and the dog and the dog is uh, pulling you the dog's the first one out the door of the home these are all not good things the dog uh, whoever is first when we're walking is the leader okay so in the wild uh, whoever the first one in the pack is is the leader because simply when you encounter things when you're walking if I'm the first one out now I am the first one dealing with any threats that come towards us anything coming towards the dog face on it's considered a threat so if I'm in front I deal with the threat if my dog's in front now my dog is required to go ahead and deal with people dogs or whatever we encounter on our walks because they're physically the first one in front so it only makes sense that they would be the leader because they make the decision about what's going to happen with the people or dogs who are in front of us at our walk so that's why you want to be first obviously when we see people we wave hey how you doing and then we just keep on going you know we don't talk to people we don't let them pet the dog um, <clears throat> so back to collar and harness you're going to want to use a collar uh, you have to train the dog specifically how to respond to the collar and uh, you're not going to want to use a harness. It's only going to make your situation worse. It's only going to help the dog pull. But you, if you use a collar again, you want to make sure you train the dog and uh, you don't just allow the dog to pull. Even on a regular collar, that will do extreme damage to the dog's neck if they're allowed to pull on a regular collar. That's why we train them just like Miss Maggie here and you can see that her, her leash is nice and loose as she's walking. And maybe you can even see our shadow, how she's nice and loose, you know? Nice and loose, good girl, Maggie. And that way she learns to walk with a loose leash and she never has pressure on her neck, except for if she looks at something she's not supposed to or if I need to correct her for some reason to keep her from breaking heel so outside that's their job you want to use a collar and have them in heel the entire time when you're walking and a dog like this needs to be controlled 100 percent of the time i believe all dogs should be especially outside they should always walk at your heel they should not be out in front with a harness they should be at your heel with a collar on